Good day, viewers, and welcome to our special discussion on the electricity legislation and the upcoming public sensitizations. I am your host, Wendy Ajonai, and with me today are two energy officers within the Energy and Public Utilities Division of the Department of Infrastructure. To my right, Mr. Sherman Francis, welcome. Thank you very much. And Mrs. Kun Antoine Gabriel, Thank you. welcome. Nice to have you today. Thank you. So we are moving straight into why we are here. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to hear more about what exactly is the Electricity Supply Act? The Electricity Supply Act, in short, is the governing framework or the regulatory framework for the electricity sector in St. Lucia. Um, si mwen pou di yon kriol, si loa ki ka gouverne, za fe kouwa an sen lisi. Simple, that's what it is. Okay, so there is an existing act, that's what I, I gather, right? Correct, yes. So why is there a need to revise it? Okay, so the current act, as is it stated, and we had a few amendments, the latest being in 2016, where we saw the unbundling of um, generation. Under this current act now, we see Lucilec having the license for generation, distribution, and transmission of electricity. And uh, with the amendments, persons were now allowed to generate from their renewable energy um, sources, your photovoltaic system. So the NUC was also established in 2016. So the amendment gave credence to the NUC um, to give licenses to persons or permits to persons who generated electricity um, from these renewable energy yeah, sources. What, is, what exactly is the NERC? Oh, the NERC is the National Utilities Regulatory Commission. Okay. And if I may add, um, we recognize that uh, with all the changes that are happening in the, gov in the electricity sector, um, with government's trust for renewable energy, um, and the climatic, um, the climatic um, obligations that we have sent on to, Mm -hmm. There was a need to revamp the electricity sector, so we have to be more mod modern. Okay, so within the, the the drafted bill, what are the key provisions of that that electricity bill? Okay, so this new bill will be called the Electricity Act. Mm -hmm. Previously, we knew it as the, or currently we know it as the Electricity Supply Act, mm -hmm. um, two point oh eight. But this new this new bill, when when passed in Parliament, will be called the Electricity Act. And some of the key provisions would be the continuity of Lucilex's license for generation or generation, transmission, and distribution of electricity mm -hmm. from fossil fuels only. Yeah. And, oh. Well, in Creole, again, um, mm -hmm. Lucilex, nous connaissons Lucilex, c'est la seule um, compagnie qui s'est générée, um, distribuée, et vendue. Mm -hmm. um, but you can say that from what we call that we have fossil fuels, mm -hmm. diesel. You can build a diesel to we'll generate power. We'll we'll so, um, new and the law of NEFSA can ensure that license, license, will we'll like continue, so we'll like continue to do from fossil fuels. Okay. So, and we also see now the, introdu the introduction of a licensing regime for electricity generation for independent power producers, but that would be for renewables. So Lucilec maintains that exclusivity, exclusivity mm -hmm. for fossil fuels. However, any new entrance into the sector would be for renewable energy. Okay, so let me, let me try to understand what you're saying. So Lucilec, they, they remain the existing company, Great. Um, but they will be using fossil fuels. However, any new company coming on board, they would have to use re Some, yeah, renewable energy. energy. Yeah. So, um, if I want to use geothermal, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, well, again, so the new legislation will open the market mm -hmm. for generation. So, what we call IPPs can come in, independent power producers. They can come in mm -hmm. and generate electricity from renewable energy sources only. Okay. Fossil fuels again stays for Lucilec, exclusive license for Lucilec mm -hmm. to generate from fossil fuels. Okay. So that's one of the major provisions in there. Okay. Um, also, we will be seeing more integration of the, these renewable energy sources into the grid. So again, this new legislation allows that to happen. Mm -hmm. So these IPPs can integrate into the grid and sell their power through Lucilec because Lucilec is still the, will be the network licensee. Okay. So it still has to go through the network licensee mm -hmm. and into the customers. Okay. Um, 
So again, this legislation will make well, we put in place clear measures for the protection of consumers. Um, there will be what we call the tariff regulations and a whole other set of regulations, mm -hmm. including the ELA regulations, wiring regulations, fair trade regulations. A lot of different mm -hmm. regulations will accompany that same act um, mm -hmm. to ensure that the electricity sector in St. Lucia is one that is well regulated and properly installed. So basically, you're protecting the consumers as Yes, a, as so yes. there okay. will be guidelines to say how the consumer should act and also the the network licensee should act so and these guidelines and would be and these this protection would be um, afforded by the NUC. Okay. so they're the independent regular um regulator with that mm -hmm. responsibility okay um if i may just add um again government is seeking to promote the use of renewable energy um and we want to ensure that there's a reliable supply there's an affordable supply, um, there's a uh, real steady supply, and we want to introduce some competition in there as well to mm -hmm. ensure that the prices are affordable and, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, there will be clear guidance for generating, there will be clear guidance for licensing, um, and there will be guidance for grid management as well. Okay. Yes. Oh, and Lucy, okay. And Lucilec, we should also say, Shaman, that Lucilec will be the one to sell or distribute that electricity. So yes, the market will be open mm -hmm. um, for new entrants, but the entity that could distribute or sell it will, will remain we'll as be Lucilec. the network licensee. Okay. Well, we take a break now, and when we return, we will continue our discussion. Our community is making a big contribution towards St. Lucia's energy independence. So. Our voice matters. Every step of the way, the RESDP wants to ensure that your concerns, queries, and issues are heard and resolved. The Grievance Redress Mechanism, or GRM, was created to receive your concerns, complaints, and suggestions 24-7 through multiple channels. We will respect your confidentiality. There is phone, WhatsApp, email, social media, websites, and suggestion boxes. We will log and investigate every complaint within two working days and work with you to find and implement a practical solution as quickly as possible. Your voice matters. So as we pursue energy independence, to effect no. Welcome back, viewers, and thank you for staying with us as we continue the discussion on the electricity legislation. I would like to pose a question to you, Kun. What changes will the bill bring to the current electricity sector? Okay, so the bill will be introducing several important changes, including the creation of a competitive environment for electricity generation. So under the bill, we will see the entry of independent power producers, or IPPs, um, who will be able to generate and sell the electricity that is generated to the network licensee. Mm -hmm. However, we should note that this will be done through a competitive procurement process. So based on the IRRP, or what we call the Integrated Resource and Resilience Plan. And again, this will be handled by the, the regulator, the independent regulator, the NUC. So it will not be a situation that persons will be free to just enter. Mm -hmm. Based on the, the needs of our electricity sector, the, the regulator will put out a, a bid for persons to tender. And okay. I guess a successful mm -hmm. bidder then would be able to generate and, and, and sell that power. Other areas uh, include strengthening of, reg of regulations to maintain the reliability and quality of service. And that would be through the introduction of what we call a customer code regulations and also network performance regulations. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so the customer code will be for customers, how the customers relate to the utility. Mm -hmm. And the network performance is how the network network licensee, which is the utility, mm -hmm. relates to the customer. So there will be regulations for both both sides. So okay. again, we're trying to make an equitable market. Yes. Okay. Um, I like the fact that you keep stressing on there will be regulations and that 
a company or an individual cannot just come in and decide and say, I, I want to be an independent person when it comes to seeking renewable energy and um, be, be a company apart from, from Lucilex. So I like the fact that regulations are already in place or will be in place in this new act. And you, you mentioned the IRRP. Okay, well, before we get to the IRRP, mm -hmm. I, should men I should mention that individuals will still be allowed to generate from their solar or their renewable energy system mm -hmm. and be interconnected if they so desire to the grid. So there is a place for independent power producers mm -hmm. and there is also a place for the individual or the ordinary yeah. solution or the business um, mm -hmm. person in San Lucia to generate and contribute to our um, in energy independence. Okay. So that is very important. Okay. May I add, um, the independent power pro producers, the IPPs, mm -hmm. they will be licensed. Okay. There will be a licensing system, again, from the regulator, the, the NUC. Mm -hmm. um, they must give this people a license to operate in San Lucia. So okay. a company will, just, will not just come in and say, I want to produce electricity and, and just do the things on their own. Okay. They need to be licensed for that operation. To Through the NUC. Okay. Okay. So back to my, my, my question. I think the public would want to have an idea on what exactly is the IRRP um, and what is the purpose of it as well. Okay. Um, the IRRP is what we call the Integrated Resource and Resilience Plan. Um, before it was just IRP, Integrated Res Resource Plan, mm -hmm. um, but we know so many things happening. Climate change ha is happening all around mm -hmm. us, and uh, the volatility of the climate. Um, so we have added this component, which is the resilience component. How quickly that the grid can come back um, to the state where it was after a climatic event. So that's the Integrated Resource and Resilience Plan. Um, in short, it's a plan that looks into the future, the for foreseeable future of uh, the electricity sector in St. Lucia, and it will determine what happens at what time. Um, when will we need new generation? Um, when do we retire generation? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it just looks at the whole energy sector for the future and uh, puts a plan in place to ensure that the electricity sector is one that is con able to continue to meet the needs of the island mm -hmm. um, in terms of its demand and, and, and its so supply electricity. Okay, I, I think I would want you to say that, Shuman, in, in, in a little Creole for okay. for our, our viewers as well. So, IRRP is a plan that is very not just a but a distance um future mm -hmm. um electricity sector in St. Lucie. So, we have a plan to a new generation, a plan to retire the vieux set la a plan to retire the Qui met les changements qui viennent en service et qui ont des gros implications. Si les gens ont des gros implications, ils ont des gros implications pour encourager les gens à aimer, pour ensurer que le courant est toujours available pour ces gens. Bien sûr, ils ont des gros implications. Donc, pour ça, ils ont des gros pour ensurer que tout le marché est bien en service, que nous avons toujours un bon supply de courant, tout le monde est bien. Ok. Ok. So we, you, we want to speak about the consultations that the department has coming up. And I know public sensitization is very important, mm -hmm. especially for persons in small communities who does not have access to the media and to technology. So can you tell us more? Um, but I will leave that after our break. We break again and we will move into the final segment where you tell us everything about the consultations, the venue, the dates, the time, etc. The sun has always been an important energy source to man. From drying herbs, furs, claws and meats to the more complex use of mirrors to light torches in temples and warm bathhouses in ancient Rome. The sun's energy creates heat and light, which can be converted to make electricity. Photovoltaic is the process of converting sunlight into energy. The system works by placing solar panels on the roof. The solar panels attract sunlight which, con 
convert the sunlight into electrons and then a DC current is formed. The DC power runs through to an inverter and the inverter converts DC current into AC electricity that we can use in our homes, vehicles, schools, businesses and so forth. Photovoltaic is a form of renewable energy. When we speak about renewable energy, we refer to a source when used is not depleted, such as solar power, wind, geothermal energy and so forth. Solar voltaic or PV systems can generate clean, cost-effective power anywhere the sun shines. Solar PV technology is employed on panels, typically connected to each other and mounted on modules. These modules are wired together to form an array which can be scaled up or down to produce the required power. It is estimated that solar PV systems installed in the tropics will generate over one and a half times more energy than the same system installed in temperate latitudes. Solar PV, clean, abundant energy from the sun. Okay, so before we move into the dates and the venues of the consultations, if I were to access the documents, so I want to um, read the act before I attend the meeting, where can I access these documents? Okay, so the information can be found on the Ministry of Infrastructure's Facebook page. There is a press release and in that press release, you will find a link that will take you to the Google Drive and in there, you will find a suite of documents. And if you also go on to our said Facebook, the, the Government of St. Lucia's page, mm -hmm. there's also a link for the, which gives you access to the information. Okay. Um, so it's soft copy, it's a link um, to the documents. Um, it's a lot of documents, mm -hmm. a lot of pages. Um, so to print every single page will be, um, Destroying a lot of trees. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I so agree. so it's, it, it's easily accessible. You can just um, click on the link and it mm -hmm. will take you to all the documents. Okay. Would I be able to download it or it's just yeah, it's read only? You can download you it. Should okay. be able to, and we encourage persons to go through your documents because on the day we, we are going out there basically to hear from you. Yes, we will be providing information, but we also want to hear what's the public's feedback on. Okay. The, these documents that we've prepared. Mm -hmm. So we encourage again the public to go to the sites and that will be the Facebook page of the Ministry of Infrastructure and the Government of St. Lucia's web, website. And mm -hmm. in the press release, you will be able to access the link okay. to the documents. Okay, so tell me about these dates okay. and the venues, of course. Oh wow, okay, <laughs> so we were excited because it's been a long time coming and we excited to finally um, be going out there to talk to the people. So we start off next week on the 17th, on the 16th of September, mm -hmm. where we will start off in, in Castries at the City Hall. And we move on to Grosile, um, the Vladimir Lucien um, Theater of the Human Resource Development Center on the 19th of September. From there, we are going to have a private sector engagement. So we are going to be speaking to the Chamber of Commerce. We're going to speak to the Ministry of Commerce to get their feedback. And that happens with us on the 20th of September. Then we go down to Sufre. Okay, so um, just to bring you back a little, on the 16th and the 19th, what time? That happens at 5 p.m. Okay. So we are aware that persons are at work. Mm -hmm. So we've placed these, con these, um, these consultations at a time where persons are coming off work. So before you go home, just stop by and okay. come, come talk with us. Mm -hmm. uh, excepting for the private sector, which will be a closed session, mm -hmm. which happens in the morning okay. at our, our, our head office. Mm -hmm. And on the 23rd, we move to Sufre, um, Club Whispers. The 26th, we, we will be at the Viford Primary School. The 30th, we will be at the Clendon Mason Memorial Secondary School. And on the 3rd of October, which will end our round of um, sensitization, we will be going to the Mikud Secondary School. So we have attempted to go to some of the major communities, our major towns and our villages, so that persons in the surrounding areas um, will be able to 
come to these locations. Okay. We are hoping to do some more sensitization advertising mm -hmm. before the date so persons would be aware. Okay. So you said a, a lot of dates. Yes. Um, Shaman, according to this Creole Cobham, you you my Creole person here this afternoon. So let the public know the dates and also the venues. Okay, you see. Um, nous voulons tout le monde venir à ces consultations. Nous voulons tout ça au niveau de et nous voulons un chai pour toi aussi. Um, so everybody is invited. Um, ces dates-là, um, septembre, nous avons un septembre et nous avons un octobre. The 16th of septembre. Nous avons un uh, City Council. Cassius mm. City Hall. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Il y a 5 heures. 5 heures pour 8 heures. C'est là que nous avons fait. Donc, nous avons travaillé avant de la caillou, nous avons fait un peu de temps. Nous avons fait un peu de temps pour nous. Le 16 de septembre. Le 19 de 19 septembre, nous avons fait un gros idée. Human Resource Center en gros idée. Même là, 5 heures pour 8 heures. Um, Le 20 septembre, nous ni ça nous couille en close session nous avons une spéciale invitation par des trois mondes c'est c'est mondes ça nous répare les bails so il pas ouvert pour tout le monde en public là so c'est mondes ça nous répare les bails à sous septembre 20 23 septembre nous garde des gens souffrir nous garde un club c'est c'est côté américain souffrir ok ça va oui nous garde un club whispers tout le monde sait que club whispers um c'est juste bon um cimetière cimetière là c'est ça So, nous avons encore 5 heures pour 8 heures. Le 26 septembre, nous allons aller deux fois. Um, Premier school deux fois. Um, Sauf deux fois, nous allons aller deux nuits. 3 septembre, deux nuits. À l'école, c'est quatre de nuits. So, uh, le encore, c'est 5 heures pour 8 heures. La dernière consolation, nous allons aller en octobre, le 3 octobre. Le 3 octobre, nous avons un micro. L'école, c'est quand même un micro. Léa, c'est même Léa, 5 heures pour 8 heures. Donc, toutes ces dates, nous avons 7 consultations. Mais nous avons encouragé tout le monde pour venir. Nous avons un micro. 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 Nous avons un Okay. Okay. So, thank you so much. Um, before we wrap up, any final words to our viewers? Again, my final words. There are a lot in these uh, documents. It's our electricity legislation, the new electricity legislation. So we want you to come out. Come and hear what's in there and come and talk to us. We want everybody to be part of this consultation that it will affect everybody. It will affect the whole energy sector of St. Lucia mm -hmm. for the foreseeable future. Thank you. Any last words from Well, Michelle? tell a friend to tell a friend. Bring your neighbor. We want you to come. So don't say we didn't tell you. We have said it in Creole. We have said it in English. We w come out and as Sherman said, come and ask the questions. We want you to ask the questions. So, and we're hoping to see you there. So remember, Castries, Grosile, Viewfort, Soufre, Mikud, and Denry. So we are hoping to see you there. Okay. Thank you so much, Shuman and Kern, for being with me today. And you have given us a wealth of knowledge when it comes to the electricity legislation and, of course, your upcoming sensitization and consultation. Thank you again. Thank you and thank you to our viewers for. Stay in tune and listening in. We hope to see you at the consultations as well. Like our energy officers mentioned, there is a community where there will be for everyone to have access to. Thank you for listening. <laughs>